Welcome to Key Point Church. At Key Point, we exist to help you know God, experience life, discover purpose, and to make a difference in your world. From wherever you're watching, we hope this message encourages you. Well, good morning. I want to welcome you to Christmas at Key Point. So glad you're here. We're going to continue today in a message series entitled Home for Christmas. And what I'd like to do today is take a few moments and define what home means in the sense of our physical home. And I'm, I'm going to reflect a little bit on my home and what I grew up in, and hopefully that'll bring a little joy to you. But we also want to define what home is to Jesus Christ. I think that's really important, okay? But let's press pause right now, and if you can set your Bible down, maybe your phone, and let's pray. Father, we love you today, and we thank you for the opportunity to be under your word, to hear your word, Lord, because your word can transform our life, and that's what we need. Lord, today, I, I want to change. When I leave church today, I want to be different. I want you to do something inside of me. And when I look back, I'll know that only you could have done that. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And Lord, I thank you for the true meaning of Christmas, and that is Jesus living inside my life. And Lord, we give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody said amen. amen. All right. Now, in several weeks, my family and I will be getting to our, in our car, and we're going to be traveling home, going through the, the heart of Arkansas down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Raise your hand if you're going to be traveling home for Christmas. Come on, let me see your hands, all right? Raise your hand if you're staying here for home. You're like, nope, I'm not going back there, all right? I left there, I'm staying home, all right? That's what I like, all right? <laughs> but I think I've been home just about every Christmas except for one, and I remember the day I missed Christmas with my family. I cried all day long. It was terrible. I decided I'm not going to do that again. But there's something in us, I believe, that, that just causes us to do whatever to get home, to get to that place that we call home. We, we'll walk. We'll drive. We'll, we'll canoe. We'll jet ski. We'll do whatever it takes. It's like there's this homing device inside of us, and as soon as it turns on, we're just, we're just navigating back. And And I want us, as we go through the next several weeks, especially on Christmas Day, to to think about those who will not be home. First and foremost, the men and women that are sacrificing their life and serving this great country in the military, all around the world, not only here, but around the world, sacrificing and giving of their time, not at home. Please be in prayer for them. You think back to the first Christmas, Mary and Joseph, they were not at home. They found themselves traveling in a very busy time of the year, traveling back to, to his hometown where they weren't living for a census. The shepherds, they weren't at home. Scripture tells us that they were pulling an all-nighter. There they were in the fields, sipping espresso, trying to stay warm by the fire. In Matthew chapter 2, it tells us that the wise men, they were searching for this child. They, they were far from home. And then, of course, the main character in our story is Jesus He left his home. Scripture says it this way in John 1 and verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Think about the power of that scripture. Jesus left his home, the glory and splendor of heaven, and came and was born in a manger and laid right after that into a very ordinary piece of form furniture. Not really the the entry that probably one would imagine the king of kings would get, but yet that's what Jesus chose. He left heaven and he came and sacrificed his life for you and me. Now in a minute we'll, we'll define what Jesus calls home, but let me give you a few thoughts of mine. When I think of home, write this down, I think of a place. In fact, I think of a certain place. The address is still 9516 Willow Creek Drive, Greenwell Springs, Louisiana, which is a suburb of Baton Rouge. I remember this place. I remember the home. I I could walk through that home right now without even opening my eyes. We had a sunken in den. We had a big fireplace that went up on uh, a couple of stories. My parents' room was to the left, and all the kids' rooms was to the right. And it was amazing, the smells and the memories associated with that home, the Christmas stories that we had there in that home. It It was awesome. It's where I grew up most of my childhood. 
I spent my entire teenage days there and also a few years uh, as a young adult until my parents sold that home. But I, I think about all the, the different times we had, the good and the bad and, and the great times. I remember my 12-year-old 12, 12 uh, Christmas, my, my desire was a three-wheeler. Think about that. <laughs> Let's design this tricycle with oversized balloon tires and put a big engine in between it and, and not tell them wear a helmet and, and let it go 65 miles an hour. Yeah, that's smart. You think people will buy it? Oh, we bought them all right. Man, people bought those things. And I remember begging my parents, I got to have a three-wheeler. All my friends were getting three-wheelers. I have to have one. I go out up under the Christmas tree. There was one little bitty key that morning. Yeah, I knew what it was. It was to my 125M electric start, baby. Come on now. I was on. Now, we had some property, and there was a creek that split our property in two, and we had a bridge to go to the back part of the property across the creek. And from time to time, downstream, beavers would, would dam up the creek, all right? And this particular time, it, it, the beavers had made a big dam, so it was not flowing. And when it came through our property, it was probably about five foot deep when it went up under our bridge. And on, on the other side, away from the house, it was about a 15-foot cliff just straight down to the water. And that morning, it froze. And there was about an inch thick of ice on top of the creek, all right? So I'm driving my three-wheeler. I'm excited. I can't believe it. I'm not letting anyone touch my three-wheeler. You can even look at it, all right? So finally, later on that afternoon, we're having a Christmas party. My mother's side of the family's there. And my sister, she asked me, Casey, you got to let me ride the three-wheeler. Let me ride the three-wheeler. Come on. Please, 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 let me ride it. All right, all right, all right. All right. Go. Go like 10 feet, turn around and come back, all right? I was being really generous. Well, she took it, and she went across the bridge, and I started to get nervous. I'm standing there by the basketball goal, and I'm looking out, and I'm screaming, you know, trying to tell her what to do, you know, and she's trying to go through the gears. And one time I screamed really loud, Stacy, because she was getting real close to the cliff of the creek. And she looked over at me, and when she looked at me, she kind of, veered to the right a little bit, and the back right tire, because it's a tricycle, it hit a little po hole uh, on the cliff, and she flipped off the cliff. She fell 15 feet. She broke the ice, and the three-wheeler pushed her totally under the water. I know. Isn't that terrible? My brand-new three-wheeler. <laughs> I'm like, my three-wheeler. I'm crying. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This is my new red Honda 125M. I don't care about my sister. She we can get another one, you know. <laughs> my dad comes running out, and I remember one of my uncles come running out, and they jumped in, and they saved my sister, and, and then finally saved my three-wheeler. I mean, it's floating upside down. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just crying. We got it out, and I made them bring it into the house <laughs> through the front door, and I got all the hair dryers I could get, and I was blow-drying it, just trying to defrost it. And, you know, it's all about the place. Here's the second thing that I'm reminded of, really, it's not indicative of that story, but my home was all about people. <laughs> not my sister that day, of course, you know. Ruined my three-wheeler. But home is about people. And I think about family. I think about the home, how it is God's chosen instrument to teach us how to be selfless, to teach us how to work with other people, to teach us how to be obedient and to be submissive and to listen and to do chores, and I think the home is one of the biggest places where we learn how to develop character and persistence and consistency. No wonder the enemy has done whatever he can to destroy homes. Now, some of you are thinking, well, I don't want to think about home like that because my home is dysfunctional. I came from a dysfunctional home, and I go home for Christmas, there's no way. I'm not going back to that place. There's scars and there's pains associated with that. You know, I thought about taking this out. And the Holy Spirit checked me and said, no, no, you don't take that out. Because at Key Point Church, one of our goals is to help people flip the script of their life. And I know my parents flipped the script because my parents did not come from homes that, that, that were, were indicative of this. There, there was people, but there was a ton of dysfunction. And my mother and father made a decision that they were going to create an atmosphere where, where my sister and I and my brother could have a functional home. Were we perfect? Absolutely not. My mother and father were far from perfect. But the, 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 the bad 
was not as much as the good. The good far outweighed the bad. And now I can think back, and, and those, those moments were amazing. And that is my goal today, to create that same environment for my children. And some of you are thinking, well, that's what I want to do. Well, you know what? Maybe that's what you can get for Christmas. Maybe that's what God wants to do for you. Break those generational curses off of your life and flip that script so you can start making golly memories this Christmas so that your kids and your grandkids can look back and say, you know what? This is what home means to me. Home means a place where, where, where I have family and, and I have friends. Home, home is a, a, a certain address that, that I don't mind going back to. And here's the third thought about home. For me, it was a place of protection. It was a place where I could drive up into my driveway or come home from school and I could walk into my house and my mother and father would not even have to be there and I just felt protected. I felt safe. I felt, oh, I could sit on the couch and, and be myself. It was a, it was a place where, where I, I, could, I could learn. It was a sanctuary, a, a place where, uh, where I could fall safely and not be ridiculed. It was a place of protection. So how does Christ define home? Well, it too is about a place, and that certain place, write this down. Here's the first thought for today is my heart. His home is my heart. His home is my heart. And when Jesus graced us with his presence that day in the manger, he was one step closer to his new home, and that new home was taking up residence in my heart. Let me read you this scripture out of Galatians chapter 4. And I've never read it in the context of Christmas. When I read it, I thought, well, this is it right here. Verse 4, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law. So that he could adopt us as his very own children. You see the family here? See the protection here? And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son where? Into our hearts. Prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Is it possible, maybe possible that you aren't calling out Abba Father because Jesus isn't really living in your heart. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17, and I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts. What an amazing prayer. Jesus, be more and more in my home every day, in my heart, my heart, in my life every day. Living within you, here's, here's your part, as I trust in him. As I trust in him. This is the essence of Christianity. It is the core of Christmas. That an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-sovereign God will choose to live within a trusting and committed heart. Now for me, this happened on the 4th of July in the summer of 1988. And it, it began to flip the script of my life. At 19 years old, I I began to trust in the Lord and allow him to be the Lord of my life, which means if, if he is not the Lord of my life, then he's not Lord at all. It takes total commitment, all right? And before then, all I wanted was just to do church things because I went to church every Sunday morning, and really going to church was just helping me look churchy because I didn't want to go to hell. Nobody wants to go to hell, right, because hell's hot. <laughs> I just wanted fire insurance. But listen, that's not Christianity. Jesus even said it like this, and it was my prayer. Lord, I don't want to hear these words. And Jesus said, you know, uh, I don't want to have to say to you, get thee behind me because I never knew you. I want to know you. I want you to live in my life. And it changed my life. It changed how I view Christmas. I began to see that Christmas was all about his, his plan to send Jesus to this earth so that he could live in my life. Home is my heart. Here's the second thing I believe that Christ wants us to understand is that his heart is about people. Just like my home was about people, his heart is about people. All people matter to God. It's one of our 
our guiding values here at Key Point Church. All people matter to God. And he went out of his way to reach people. He has and he always will. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. To give his life as a ransom for many. That word ransom, it means a redemptive payment. In other words, you had a price tag on your head that you could not pay for. And Christ came and went out of his way so that he could pay that price for you. Come on, somebody. Jesus, he went out of his way and he broke the lines of culture and race to reach people. He went after people that society didn't even want. He went after the rejected and and the stiff-armed. Jesus went out of his way to go for those who were bound in religion. That 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 was really good at the process of how you serve God, but yet they were missing it totally with their heart. And he went after those who were bound in false religion. He was for all people. And not only that, but Jesus marginalized himself. He took a chance to go and hang out with the notorious sinners, the sinners of all sinners. This is where Jesus went, to reach people. He cares for people. What a picture of a church family. What a picture that you and I could have as a church family. Some of you may have tons of dysfunction at home. Some of you may call Key Point Church your church family, your life group. Your small group may be your church family. That's what Christ intended it to be. You know, Jesus didn't come to be an enforcer of rules, but he came to set up a church to be an outpost of his grace and mercy. A ransom for every person. The churched, the dechurched, the unchurched, the tall, the short, the rich, the poor, The red, the yellow, the green, the black and white. God loves all people. All people. They are the center of his focus. Scripture tells us they're engraved in the palm of his hand. John 3, 17 is right after a very famous scripture, John 3, 16. But I want you to hear 17. We often quit right there at 16. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. That's not love. That's not true love. But to save the world through him. If God wanted to bring condemnation, he would have sent a condemner. But he did not. Instead, he chose to send you and me a savior. Wow. God is about all people. All people matter to God. And then here's the third thing Jesus did, the way he would define home, it's protection. His life provided eternal protection. Romans 6, 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift. Everybody say gift. Come on, say it with me, gift. You like gifts, don't you? But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Think about that. The wages of my sin They were death. And death means eternal separation from a heavenly father. But the gift, the gift that God gave me was Jesus Christ. Salvation, eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. How? Making him my Lord. Saying, you call the shots in my life. And that's a great question to ask. If you want to know if the Lord really is the Lord of your life, ask yourself, who is the boss of me? Scripture goes on to say in 1 John 2, 25, this is a promise that you, uh, excuse me, that he promised us eternal life. This gift. Eternity, salvation is a gift. And you know what that means? You can't pay for it. There there cannot be an exchange of money. It's got to be received. If Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, then you can have eternal protection. You can. You can be protected. And I don't have to wonder if I'm saved. I don't have to wonder if I've done enough to get saved or to reach eternity. If you think about it, Christ did not come to this earth and suffer the cross to be raised from the dead so that one day I can 
just make it into eternity. That would weaken the the work of the cross. That would weaken and cheapen what Jesus did for me. Just so I would have to wonder. No, I don't don't have to wonder. And I know a lot of people question, well, well, how how can I know that I know? Because I remember... At, at, at 19 years old, when, when I truly made the Lord, the Lord of my heart and my life, I knew that I knew that I knew. I knew it. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm explaining to you this way. As I close, I want, I want you to hear me out, okay? We are triune beings, which means we're made up of three parts, a body, a soul, and a spirit. A body, of course, you know what your body is. A soul, that's your mind, will, and emotions, and then your spirit, all right? Let me explain it. Let me break it down for you. One day, when you breathe your last breath, I pray that, that, that you have made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. And if that is the case, on this side of breathing your last breath, what will take place after that, the Bible says it's future tense, you will be saved. In other words, your body will be perfected. The word saved in the Greek, it means perfected or made whole. You will be saved. The, the soul is the mind, will, and emotions. That's every day. You are being saved. So when I wake up, my goal today, God, is to, Lord, I, I want my will, I want my emotions and my mind to be more like you and less like the person that I used to be. I want that there, there to be more of a distance between who I used to be before Christ came into my life. So every day, I'm working out my salvation. Every day, I'm, I'm learning God's word. I'm hearing the voice of God, and I'm responding to him. Every day, my soul is being saved. Now, here's where your spirit comes in. Whenever your spirit is saved is the day you give Jesus Christ your heart. And how does that take place? Eternity starts when you die. But really, eternity starts when you die to self. At 19 years old, I died to Casey calling the shots. And I made Jesus the Lord of my life. It was the best decision I've ever made. And I'm standing here today because of the mercy and grace that I have learned to walk in since then. And one day, Jesus is going to come to me. And he's going to say, Casey, man, you've had a great run at it. You've done everything you can. I mean, you've, your family is good, and you're, you, you did great. Now, you know what? You've been making your heart my home. Now, I want to take you because I've been preparing you a home. And I'm going to take you with me, all right? And what, what happened? I'm going to breathe my last breath. My body is going to be made whole. I'm going to be with Jesus. You're going to come to my funeral, and you're going to look at me in that casket. And go, oh, poor PC. Poor soul, poor dude. No, you're too late. Because <laughs> at 19, I died. And the life that I live now, I live through Jesus Christ, faith and trust in him. The life that I am living now is currently because of the grace and mercy that I'm experiencing. And I know that I know that I know. Why is that? Because I'm experiencing eternity right here in my heart. I don't have to wonder. Once again, why would Jesus suffer the cross and be subjected to the humiliation and the grave to be raised on the third day just so I can sing that song, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. That's the wrong words. In all due respect, that's a great song, but really it's wrong. I can have heaven now in my heart until I get to heaven and have it for real. Amen. Imagine if that would be the gift that you open this Christmas. Experiencing heaven in your heart today, now. But listen, that level of security today, it takes total commitment. It takes total trust. And and you can do it. Romans 3.20, it says, here I am, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, if you hear my voice, you control the door, you open the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. The greatest gift of all is his son. And for some of you right now, he's knocking on your door. 
He's knocking through your problems. He's knocking through all the dysfunctions. And he's not going to come in and start pointing a condemning finger. But he's gonna, he wants to come in by your decision because you control the door. He wants to come in and meet you where you are because you matter to God. Amen. He wants to come in and be your Savior and say, hey, I'm Emmanuel. I am here for you. I want your spirit to be perfected today. Let me rule and reign in your heart. I think some of us today need to open that door. So, some people hear Jesus knocking on the door, but yet you've already looked outside and said, Shh, it's Jesus. Turn the lights out. Act like we're not here. I am, no, no, I got more things I need to do. I'm the boss. I'm not ready yet. Isn't it about time that you prayed in all honesty and sincerity, Jesus, I want you home for Christmas. Isn't it about time that you admitted that your heart is Christless? Say, so you know what? I, I'm going to be totally committed. I think somebody in this room needs to say, Jesus, come into my life and make yourself at home. And, and please hear me. The furniture doesn't have to be straight. The dishes can still be dirty. The floor does not have to be cleaned. He'll come in right now. He'll take you right where you are. But the beautiful thing about Christianity is that he loves you too much to keep you the same. Will you bow your heads with me this morning as we close? If you have any doubt about your eternal protection, why would you wait any longer? Why not be sure and know that you know that you know today? Today is the day. With your head bowed and your eyes closed around the room. I think this would be the most excellent gift that you could ever open up. This free gift that you could never pay for. And it's to make Jesus supreme ruler of your heart. And I promise you, I promise you, you'll never be disappointed. The Bible says if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you shall be saved. And here at Key Point Church, we offer those two steps every Sunday morning. And you don't even have to get out of your seat. Get your head bowed and your eyes closed right now. You hear that knocking. It's Jesus. I would encourage you right now to grab that doorknob and open up that door. Say, come on in, Jesus. I need you. I need you. Your grace, your mercy, I need it. If you're in here today and say, that's me, Pastor Casey, we're going to give you the, an opportunity to make that decision. The first Step I'm going to ask you to take right there where you're sitting is to raise your hand all across the room. If that's you and you want to open up that door, just raise your hand around the room. Come on, just raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, hands going up all around. Come on, just raise your hand. God's knocking. Jesus is knocking. Come on, raise your hand up. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, you can put your hand down all the way in the back. Thank you. Come on, anybody else? Now I'm going to ask you to do this. It's called confession. The Bible says, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord. He is Lord. You are Lord of my life and you shall be saved. And I want us all to pray with those who raise their hand. I want us all to make that our confession this morning all across the room. Repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus Christ. Come on, say it out loud. Jesus Christ, I call you the Lord of my life. Come and live and reign in my heart. Be at home. Tell him more and more in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we honor you today and thank you for this free gift called salvation. And Lord, I thank you for perfecting spirits today. Lord, I thank you that you are so faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet as we close this morning, actually this afternoon. 
Can you close your eyes? I want to pray for those who maybe are not that excited about this Christmas. All around the room, let's just make this a moment. This is an altar moment. If you want to put your hands like this, or maybe you want to raise your hands like, a, Scott, I need you. Maybe you want to grab the hand of the, your spouse. Maybe if you were a friend, say, hey, pray with me. But let's all go to Jesus right now. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. And you walk down heaven's grand staircase to make your new resident my home. And Lord, I invite you into the process. Lord, I invite you into my life continually every day. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. I know that I know that I know. Lord, I thank you for that free gift called salvation. Thank you for the gift through Jesus Christ, my Savior. Lord, I pray that you give us new meaning of home. Help us, God, in every need, Lord, if it's single again or if it's an empty nester, if it's a college student or a young person, Lord, that's wondering what's happening with home. Lord, I pray that you give us all grace and mercy to be able to handle anything that we may face, Father, the next several weeks. And, Lord, we're going to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Come on, put your hands together this morning for Jesus. Come on, Key Point Church. Wow. Well, many people raised their hand for salvation this morning to make Jesus the Lord of their life. And can I ask you to take it to the next step? Take that conversation card that's right there in the seat back in front of you and fill it out. Fill that out. Start a conversation with us. You can leave them in the boxes as you go, the little gray boxes at all the exits, or leave them at guest services. And what we'll do, we'll send you a letter and let you know the next steps, okay? And we're going to come alongside you if you ask. And we, we want to encourage you to allow us to assist you in your relationship with God, okay? Discipleship and Christianity is lifelong, and we want you to be experiencing heaven and eternity in your heart today, all right? So let us help you with that. Also, if you need anything, maybe if Christmas is a horror story for you, maybe you, you know you have to go home and there's, there's rooms or, or there's stories or there's memories that, that you have tried to forget about but can't, and you need someone to pray with you, let us know about that. We'll pray with you. We have a prayer team that will pray over those. Fill out that conversation card as well. Our, our altar ministry team is going to be up here at the end of the service. If you have something today pertinent on your heart that you want us to pray with you about, please come and find one of them. You're 10, 15 steps away from being prayed for today, okay? We love you. We want to make sure that you have the best Christmas ever. Don't forget about what's happening next week. I highly encourage you to, to invite someone. Um, I would encourage you to get here early for the services. They're going to be absolutely amazing. The elements that are going to be there, it's going to be a totally different service than what you experience every week. It's a great, great opportunity to bring a friend. All three services, come and be a part of it. Get your kids in the um, child care and ch get them checked in. Get you some coffee and get ready. It's going to be incredible. Don't forget about what's going on the week of Christmas, all the uh, devotionals. If you want to receive those devotionals, fill out a conversation card or go to our website, keypointchurch.com. And uh, I start off with a devotion, a, a three to five minute devotion, and there's one for every day, seven days into Christmas. And there's a special one for Christmas Day. And our goal is for you to sit down with your family. Maybe there's family there that won't come to church. And you'll say, hey, y'all check this out. Look what Y'all check this out, and there will be an a awesome Christmas message. And In fact, that day's on love, God's unconditional love. It would be a great opportunity. Maybe, maybe Uncle or Cousin Eddie may get saved that day. Who knows, all right? <laughs> but anyway, we love you, and never forget that Jesus is the key. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining us at Key Point Church. If you would like more information or would like to partner with us by giving, go to keypoint.church. You can also find us on any social media platform. Don't forget to subscribe and always remember, Jesus is the key and people are the point.